these particular places. So those seashore with uh, low risk of marine occupation due to the sea level rise are the mountain, the mountain one. The one I show you is here. This is the first I'm going to show you. And you will see how interesting it is. What happened here? You see? Directly, the slope into the sea. And this is a rod. So what you're going to lose is this. And actually, after every hurricane, you have to rebuild a little bit this. But this is a very active seismic zone. So you cannot, uh, I mean, it will not be very good to, to drill uh, tunnels there. Because you can be in the tunnel forever. So better not to. <laughs> so this is the kind of environment we have in the... But there are many Canadians... Uh, size. I mean, they love to be here in as tourists. And you see, these this, uh, are the type of, of, of seashore or, or, or sandy uh, shores, which are very coarse. These two. And this is a river which has been flooded by sea level rise in the past, but still going on. And then the, the little bay is formed. Usually, most of the Cuban bays are uh, river valleys inundated in the last 8,000 years as a minimum. Here you have, you see, there is a complicated uh, landscape with rocky points and so on. So the, in, if, the, if something happened here, the sea level is not a big deal because there is not uh, big, con big um, constru construction, just a few, few uh, tourist spots and so on, no more. The second is, as I told you, this uh, marine terrace. So it's a, it's a rocky coast which can have one low marine terrace with is less than one meter, but can be as a high as 200 meters, uh, a set of... Uh, of steps, like steps. In this place, uh, of the, the marine uh, occupation will be not too much in the, in the next year, but you have the problem of the salinity. Uh, if it is a limestone environment with sea level rise, the uh, saline intrusion will complicate the use of fresh water, the availability of fresh water there. So, you can see what is the this kind of, of landscape with a lot of uh, steps, like a gigant steps. And this is a, an older blue hole. It was a blue hole and now it's uh, uplifted. Very large one. It was discovered by a, by a pilot in an airplane because it's very hard to get there. We did it, but uh, it took a lot of effort. And here you have the steps in one of, of those places in southern Cuba, southeastern Cuba. So these places are not as risky for marine invasion like uh, uh, the NERCs I'm going to show you later. So this is in Havana. We were there during the field trip, especially we were here. Uh, I'm sorry. We were here in this place looking into this direction. And um, you see in Havana, you have one and two levels. And then below the water, there are two or three more levels of marine uh, terraces. This is the same place, more or less, you see. So whatever sea level right here is not a big deal. But in the valleys of the rivers, in the, in the beach areas, and, of course, with the problem of the uh, marine salt, salt invasion of groundwater. But there is a problem here. Rocks being thrown away by the sea. Uh, the, the, when there is extreme wave in a hurricane or tsunami, you can have a lot of rocks being thrown to the lower part. But these rocks can be as high as 20 a 15 meters high terrace and 50, 60 meters away from the shore. So the big wave can throw this rock very far away from the, from the sea. These are coralline rocks. So it's a major risk for, for any construction there. S 
look, look at this. There are more than 60 of them, some as, as high as this, uh, this uh, place, very large. And this is a, a very, very complicated uh, situation, a very risky place to, for, for any kind of building. I make a map, and you can see that the South Shore is, is, is the worst scenario with very large of these uh, blocks. And the northern one, interesting, never larger than one meter. Do you remember the first photograph I showed? That's the, that's the largest block you can have. So the waves coming from the north are not so strong, but from the south are very, very, very large sometimes. And I, sorry, always me. And I draw this because these are steep walls, submarine walls. So if you have an earthquake here, which is very common, you can have a landslide and then you can have a tsunami. This is why I, I draw these, uh, these uh, places. So beach transformation. In every kind of uh, seashore, you can have a beach. But they are very common in the limestone, in the limestone uh, seashore. So this is a, a, a problem which, because I can say that almost all of them are in the process of transformation. And you can have this uh, issue. I mean, you see that the, the trees are in the wrong place. These are not even uh, black mangrove or, or, or red mangrove. It's just uh, the inland forest being uh, in, in contact with the sea. So this is a, a, a bad uh, place it will be continuously eroded by the wave because this is this 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 uh, vegetation is not prepared for uh, facing the, the the sea and the problem is that usually in a normal landscape without mountains the uh, beach when when sea level rise will move inland and that's where we are looking many times in this place, the, the sands are deep into the forest, which shall not be. Normally, there, there are karstic soil, I mean, karstic, karstic uh, um, uh, places with, with the plants, and here the, the sand is, is pulling in, in, in very deep into the area. Look at how the struck, and look at the, the little wall here. In, this is not sand anymore. This is already beach rock and so on. <coughs> you saw that one already. In this is Cayo Largo. It's very interesting because uh, it has many, many, this is in the southwest, and it has many, many uh, bars. So the, the beach was uh, at some point coming from here to the south. So this was the, the growing. The older bars are <coughs> in, in, and the jungles outside. But now, this last one is being eroded. There's not any, any normal situation there. Well, it's normal. I mean, no, not the regular, nor the, uh, the dynamic uh, place. So this is what you see. This is a piece of one, one uh, dune here, a paleo dune, which is eroded. And the, the beach is uh, retreating. So here you are. The paleodium is lost. And the beach is moving inland. And you see, the sea is working directly on the dune. These are all light sands. So the new uh, beach deposits, which are formed to the east, because the, the, the marine current moved to the east, is erosion from this. It's not original sand. It's just reworked sand from these old uh, dunes. Very interesting. So also, you can see this. I was uh, talking with somebody here, several of you, about the, the problem of con bad construction, very expensive very old one, beautiful in, in their own time, construction which are mm, pro, uh, progressively lost due to the hurricane because they were built in the beach 
or in the dune. And what is the problem? When you don't remove these buildings, at the end you have no beach, no house. So the smartest way is to remove the houses, just remove them totally, even, even because otherwise you have not even the, the sand all collapse. And this under uh, action now. They have the government has shut down and, and blow away even hotels which were just by the sea in contact with the sea, and at the end, we will have no hotel and no beach. So they were removed, and all these houses are not anymore. You can see, for example, this is in, that one was Baradero. This one is the north of Havana, Guanabo. Look at here. There is a, a building just by the sea, and this uh, beach has retreated. This is a modern dune which is moving inside. And you see the sand going far in. But where the building is, you have no sand, nothing, just beach rocks. And you have lost all this sand in one shot. So that's why the, 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 the smart thing is get rid of the, of the construction. And also in this beach, they are doing the same. They are removing all this. And you see the sand coming in. To the, to the building. This is sufficiently far to stay, <laughs> but others are, are going to go, or already have gone. And then we have the third type of sea level, of, of uh, seashore, which will be strongly fl fluted, because they are already inundated. And as I say, Every one of you can come here and mark a coastline, and we'll be different. This is Zapata Swam. You see? This is uh, the so-called sea. You have mangrove, and you have these uh, hyper, hyper saline uh, lagoons, and more lagoons, and this is uh, like a sinkhole with... Uh, with con high concentration of, uh, of salt and carbonate, pro probably too. So in this kind of environment, uh, five inches of sea level rise is five inches of sea level rise deep into the, the territory. There is nothing which can stop that. This is the Cauto Basin. You see this big delta? The, the original seashore was probably more or less here, erosion of the seashore is going on all the way to the, to the west, very strong, and here is more or less preserved, more or less preserved, the, the shape of this. But it's changing as well. For example, in the past, you can use fresh water here from the river. Now they, they go back many kilometers to take fresh water from the river, because this is salt water all the way to maybe 10 kilometers inland. That's one of the problems, because people were using water there and no more. Of course, there is groundwater in this place, but uh, salinity is growing. Salinity is growing. Then you have this, this, this can be very common here in, in Florida. This place will be drowned. So what's going to happen? It's going to be a, 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 a sea there? No, probably it will change the vegetation. The ecosystem will change. We have more mangrove, different stuff. Because at some point, some people thought that the shark would be swimming there. No, 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 it's not so much. I mean, because the ecosystem react and try to find the best way to survive. But we, we, we will lose probably all of this. And there will be a different uh, organization of plants and animals in these places. Because this is at sea level. You see? This is a different place of Cuba. I'm not just going in any order. Just to show you that the same seashore are, is everywhere in these uh, areas. You see the, the grassland, the seagrass. 
look at uh, the mangrove. It's not good. It's not looking good. And this can be far away from any uh, contamination. So you say, no, maybe there is a, a factory. No, 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 no. This is, can be in the middle of nowhere. And the problem is that mangroves try to move inland when sea level rise, but it, if there is any any obstacle here, it would just disappear. And normally there is agriculture in line, there is different situation created by the men who will stop the uh, continued growth of uh, mangrove uh, inside. So. According to the observation we had for several years already, more than 15 years have been of research, many mangrove shorelines are affected in different ways. So the health of the, of the ecosystem is not in good shape in many places. So we are losing the red mangrove barrier. And this is a big problem. You can see this, this was one place, this is another. Again, they say, you see the, the dry mangrove inside. This is south of uh, Kamaway. And what happens in some places is that you have a, a beach, which is an erosional one, not a depositional one, because these sands are pliocene. And they have been exposed because the mangrove and the wetland is gone. So rest there. These, these sandy sands are beautiful. This is a beautiful place because this is um, uh, sands, golden sands from the erosion of granitic rocks. It's beautiful. And fortunately, in places hard to reach, so they are not uh, strongly tourist uh, transformed. This is south of Havana. We're using the, the photograph taken by Aeroservice Corporation in 1955. 55. This was the shoreline at that time. And this is the present shoreline, so this is lost. And in some places here, you can see the fenster and the rods going into the, uh, the water, below the water. This was one of my first trips to, to Matanzas, to the south. I was a kid, maybe 70 years old. And I said, what is this? How can, who? was so little s smart to build this rod in the water. And I didn't know about sea level <laughs> rise or anything else. But that was the situation. So what's happening here is that the, the um, ecosystem is moving in. They built uh, a rod here and they cut the mangrove many years ago. Now you have no mangrove, no rod. This rod will just supposedly go this way. And now it's gone. <coughs> so at the end we found that all these green areas are in high risk and are in the process of transformation. Some people say they will, the sharks will uh, swim in this area. I, I am not so sure. Because you never know how nature will react. Probably will, will be different ecosystem. Will be a more marine ecosystem. Will, will be something different. And of course it is humans which in some of these places there are already construction or agriculture which will avoid the ecosystem to move inland. So we will have the, the shoreline in 100 years, we will have the shoreline within the, the uh, rice fields and the sugar cane fields and, and so on. And it's, it's happening. So in the other areas, this with the not the same color, I mean yellow or, or brown, is not so risky. Not so risky, but still you have the uh, um, salinity and this cannot be avoided. So, going through some other of the issues related to climate change and global warming. 
there is the, the so-called acidification of marine waters. Well, the investigation in the last 15, 20 years, because people have been studying this for a long time, shows that uh, in the carbonate platform waters of Cuba, CO2 can be, uh, so the water can react as a source, which produce CO2. And in the um, dry season, but in the uh, rainy season, will be a sink. So it's what you need. You need to remove CO2 from the atmosphere. And now, generally, it's being removed. So we are now in good shape yet. We don't have the acid water in this moment. We cannot uh, foresee what's going to happen. But at least now we are not in such a bad shape. And seagrass. Seagrass, in some places, is suffering reduction. And even in one tourist beach, people tried to remove it because it became dirt, because it provided dirt to the beach. And fortunately, this was stopped, because even they built uh, equipment to cut the, <laughs> the grass <laughs> in the imagine. And uh, fortunately, it was stopped. I mean, are you crazy? This is the source of the sand. You may have a, a beach and then you, you lose the source of the sand and you are gone because you're, you know that in the leaf of the seagrass are many uh, microorganisms which provide the, the a big part of the sand for the beach. So you, cannot, you have to preserve this stuff. So that's what is going on now, trying to uh, let people know what, what to do with this. Coral reef. Coral reef, the, the green means healthy. And the rat is in very bad shape. As you can see, it's no good, like everywhere. Anyway, you can see now beautiful uh, reef, but some of them are losing the uh, Acropora palmata, Acropora digitata, and then you have low-line corals. So the 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 idea or, or, or the possibility is, is that in two, two, 2050 or 100, many of the of the reef will not be reef anymore. They will not react as a barrier, but they, the water will just pass. I mean, the the wave will just go through, and this is a problem for the mangrove and the beach and everything else because the wave will be more actively. Uh, uh, affecting the, the shore. And this is a very general for the Caribbean. So even though there are places here which are not touched by, by people, they are still in bad shape. And, and I don't know why there are places, spots, in perfect condition. I, mean, I think that if, if research is going to be done, it must be there to know how they survive. It's very interesting.